Superstar Lizzo today is accused of weight shaming and creating a hostile work environment for these backup dancers. I was so scared to like say what I was actually feeling. This was like supposed to be like my dream job and it turned into a nightmare. Grammy Award winning singer Lizzo has found herself in hot water upon allegations of weight shaming, sexual harassment, and fostering a hostile work environment. In a recently filed lawsuit, three of her former dancers accused Lizzo, her company Big Girl Big Touring Inc., and the captain of her dance team, Sherlene Quigley, of, quote, exposing them to an overtly sexual atmosphere that permeated their workplace, which included outings where nudity and sexuality were a focal point. This lawsuit has come as a shock, being that Lizzo's brand is all about women empowerment, body positivity, and self-love. Born on April 27, 1988, Lizzo, whose real name is Melissa Jefferson, shot to fame in 2019 with her 2017 song, Truth Hurts. After almost a decade of trying to make it in the music industry, she finally went mainstream with the success of that song. Lizzo quickly became the face of the body positivity movement as she represented a marginalized community. Growing up in Houston, Texas, Lizzo was always musically inclined. In middle school, she joined the band, where she would go on to play the flute and play it very well. I started playing flute in intermediate school, which is like fifth and sixth grade. We had a really cool band. <laughs> My band director, Mr. Browden, he would make us play all the songs on the radio and we would dance. So when we had concerts in the gym, the parents would come and they would just like get lit and be dancing in the stands and it was like a concert. So everybody wanted to be in band. Band was cool. It was cool in fifth and sixth grade. <laughs> and then? And then all of a sudden everybody left in like middle school, high school, but I stayed in it. So I remember in the fifth grade, I just wanted to be really good. I was like, I wanna be really good at the flute. Everybody else was so bad. It was so hard to be good at it. it was, it's a very difficult instrument. I became like obsessed with being good. But I learned how to play like the Carnival of Venice, which is like this really showboaty, braggadocious flute virtuosic solo piece by the seventh grade. That was my eighth grade audition piece for high school, which was this insane like And I learned that like by osmosis, basically, by listening to it, by trying to get the sounds down. And then I would read the sheet music. I wanted to be the best <laughs> at a very young age. I was that bitch in high school and Meaning, middle school. What do you mean? I was first chair, captain, flute uh, section leader, always getting the solos, piccolo player, baddest bitch on the field. They was talking about me in the streets. They was like, oh, I heard about you. You that piccolo player from A-Leaf. Yeah, boy. I know you said at first band was cool and then it wasn't so cool anymore. Yeah, you know, everybody, you know, grew up and, you know, you get the stigma like band geek or band nerd. But you stuck with it. I stuck with it. And were you a band geek? Yeah. Though Lizzo was a gifted flutist, she considered herself to be a nerd, a dork, and an outcast. Bullied for her weight, Lizzo was insecure and self-conscious. When you were younger, did you, ha did you have self-confidence? Well, I mean, when I was born, and then, you know, when, <laughs> I was, when I was precious and innocent, and then the world took my self-confidence away from me, or, that's not true, the world stacked all of these insecurities on top of my self-confidence. So I had like so many layers. Like of, what? What were of, you insecure about? I was insecure about who, like me. I was like, wow, this is, this is it. This is what I was given in this world. I was insecure about my body. I was insecure about my hair, my smile, you know. I did not like my, I would be like, <laughs> I was insecure about um, my personality because I was so different. I was so nerdy, kind of dorky. I was insecure about the way that I talked. I was insecure about my voice, everything. But it's almost like a, I don't want to exist type of feeling. But it's not because you hate yourself, but you just are done. And I never really had confidence that I could access. So at the end of the day, when it was like, well, I have nothing on this end and nothing on this end, what do I even have? 
and I think that I had just kind of zeroed out. Upon graduating high school, Lizzo would enroll at the University of Houston on a scholarship where she studied music. But on March 17, 2009, tragedy would strike when her father suddenly died. My family was being, you know, torn apart. So I didn't really have that type of support at that time in my life. And my father had started getting sick and my mom moved away because she needed to make money to support my dad and what he was going through and support her children. It was a lot. And eventually I think I just kind of froze. I left music, I left flute, which was the most embarrassing, most shameful thing that I felt like I could have ever done because flute was my whole life. And I kind of just disappeared. I went to, I went to stay with my, my mom for a little bit and I just, for a summer and I just disappeared. What do you mean disappeared? I stopped communicating with all of my friends. I stopped talking. <laughs> I stopped, I, I really stopped participating in like the real world. The loss of her dad was tremendous, causing her to drop out of college and put down the one thing that gave her joy, the flute. But after a year of grieving, Lizzo was determined to move on. With dreams of making it in the music industry, Lizzo moved to Minneapolis and later joined a few different groups. In 2014, she was invited to record a song with Prince called Boy Trouble. This experience became a pivotal moment in her career and life. The left one, a he, he, wanna fall in love with me, he, and she, he, jelly. You ain't ready for it, and when you... Prince made... The day before and the day after leaving Paisley Park, like, transformed me from just, like, a musician to an artist. I think I learned how to be an artist. Um, What's the difference? I, the difference is, is... You know, I have talent, I can sing, I can rap, I can play an instrument, yeah. I can write songs. But an artist creates art with those things. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do and then you can create art. And I learned how to kind of marry my sounds. I had so many different weird styles and yeah. I was shy about them and insecure. And I didn't know which one I was better at, but you don't have to be better at either or any of them. He you just gave have you to that? be yourself. He gave yeah. you that? Gave it to me, yeah. Well, that's what people like about you, Lizzo, because you are so uniquely yourself. Anthony's daughter, I have to tell you, TV audience, Olivia, who <laughs> never comes to CBS this morning, <laughs> came this morning because she wanted to see Lizzo. And I said, what is it, Olivia, about her? She said, because you were always unapologetically yourself. Mm-hmm. Prince would encourage Lizzo to pursue her dreams and find comfort in her diversity and versatility as an artist. On October 7, 2016, Lizzo would release her third album, Coconut Oil, under her first major record label deal. Coconut Oil received rave reviews and would go on to be a success. But 2019 is when Lizzo made her career breakthrough with the release of her fourth album, Cause I Love You. Upon gaining traction on TikTok as an advocate for body positivity, Lizzo's 2017 song, Truth Hurts, resurfaced and blew up. This is the part of my career that's really hard for me to grasp is accepting that I've done something that's never really happened or that I was a part of like a new movement or a wave. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like, I was just being myself. I was just being me, like what the hell? Yeah. Um, I'm still dealing with that. I'm like, I, everybody's been like this, right? Like it's all, this has always been the status quo. But I remember when I put, I made a song and it was like, I'm in love with myself. I'm in love with myself. I never, I was like, you know what? I've never heard anyone say that in a song. So yeah. I'm gonna say it. Yeah. And I did it like just kind of off the cuff, like silly, like funny, but I didn't realize it would start this whole thing. Like I was watching a commercial and it was these big girls in it and it had nothing to do with being big. And I was like, yeah. 
But what's cool about it is that, and this takes a bit of the pressure off, which I think is what you're referring to when it's like I have a hard time understanding or identifying myself in that framework, is that I think that timing played a big role as well. Because I think the combination of social media and the, and the fact that there was so much identity obsession mm -hmm. going on all the time, that to cut through and just say, look, let me just, like I said, make a simple statement about how I feel about myself mm -hmm. without pretending, yeah. landed at a time when others felt the same way oh wow and i think the conversation changed i think i think it was a combination of your courage and also synergy just timing. yeah i think everything is in timing i also i feel like i just didn't have the luxury of hiding behind anything because like you know i'm fat <laughs> you know what i mean so it's like i immediately am out here fat is the worst thing people can say about me at this point. This is like the biggest insecurity. It's like, how dare a pop star be fat? How dare, you know, so I had to own that. Yeah. I feel like other people who were put on that pedestal or who become pop stars probably have other insecurities or have other flaws and Definitely. things. But they can hide it behind a veneer of like, you know, being sexy and being marketable. And here's the thing, that is old fashioned. Lizzo's first number one hit, Truth Hurts, came with some controversy. Back in 2018, before it blew up on the radio waves, Lizzo was accused of plagiarism with its opening line, quote, I just took a DNA test. Turns out I'm 100% that B. The Insider reports that in February 2018, British singer Mina Lioness accused Lizzo of stealing the lyrics. In a tweet, she wrote, Everyone believes those were your words when in fact they were mine, my creativity, my wit, in my comedy. In response, Lizzo tweeted, quote, Truth Hurts was written in June for your information. Someone made a meme on Instagram that said, I'm 100% that B, and we were inspired. I give that meme credit when I talk about making the song. I've never seen your viral tweet, but I'm glad it exists. It all started when someone tweeted, Lizzo has literally built her whole brand off of some stolen words, and now her whole unraveling because she point blank refused to cite a black woman. On Beyonce's internet, the receipts last forever. Then someone responded on that thread with the tweet in question, which is from Mina Lioness in February of 2017. Her tweet says, quote, I did a DNA test and found out I'm 100% that Okay, even the Lizzo stan in me will admit that's a bit sus. And if you're a true Lizzo fan like me, you know that while Truth Hurts is topping the charts in 2019, the song actually came out in September of 2017, not so long after the tweet in question. But in early 2018, Lizzo came across the tweet and defended herself. She wrote, quote, I've never seen this before in my life. That's crazy. But you know, there's 10 billion people on the planet. The odds of multiple people putting it in a song with millions of streams are low though. Nothing new under the sun. To which Mina replied with, quote, we didn't have the same idea. It was my tweet that was taken from Twitter and put into a song. Now everyone believes those were your words when in fact they were mine. My creativity, my wit, and my comedy. And if all of this isn't messy enough, it doesn't end there. Lizzo replied back to Mina and said, quote, Truth Hurts was written in June, FYI. Someone made a meme on IG that said, I'm 100% that and we were inspired. I give that meme credit when I talk about making the song. A year later, in October 2019, Lizzo would be accused of plagiarism again for Truth Hurts, this time by a team of songwriters and producers. In an Instagram post, they wrote, quote, on April 11th, 2017, we wrote a song called Healthy with Lizzo at our studio. The lyric, I just took a DNA test, turns out I'm 100% that B, was taken from Healthy and used in Truth Hurts. We were never contacted about being credited. After reaching out to Lizzo's team about fixing it, we put the song in dispute in 2017 when it came out. We've tried to sort this out quietly for the last two years, only asking for 5% each, but we were shut down every time. The last thing we want to do is throw any negativity toward Lizzo's momentum and movement as a cultural figure. Lizzo's team would deny these new plagiarism allegations and subsequently sue them for harassment. By 2020, much of the case was dismissed. In March 2022, the parties quietly and privately settled the matter. In regards to Mina's claims, Lizzo would ultimately give her a writing credit on the song. Truth Hurts, the DNA line, the why men gotta be great. Is that all written down ahead of time or are you just coming up with that in the studio? 
funny thing about that is it's a combination of both. So the day I went in the studio to record that song, specifically Truth Hurts, um, mm-hmm. I was going through, you know, some some personal issues and I was sad. And everything that was happening to me, Ricky Reed was writing it down. And he was like, do you realize you just wrote a song? And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm crying right now. And mean, we put it together that way. You, you mean you went in the studio and said, why, why men great till they got to be great? And don't text me, tell it straight to my face. You were, you were just kind of unloading. Yeah. Oh, wow. I literally went to to the salon, got my hair done. I literally went on a date with a Minnesota Viking, like everything. And then the bum, bum, be dum, be dum, bum, be was a filler. I just was like, let's just put this in there until we find a better line. And it just kind of stuck. Like everything was just like stream of conscious. While riding the wave of success, Lizzo found herself in another controversy at the end of 2019 when she attended a Lakers game wearing a revealing outfit and acting, quote, obscene. This past weekend, she was at a Lakers Mm -hmm. game and she was wearing a a dress that had a cutout in the back showing her behind and uh, her thong. And a lot of people were taken aback by, you know, her outfit choice saying that no matter what your size is, no matter how much you... I'm not sure what I'm looking at. They they had to blur it out. They blurred it out. out. No matter what your size is, no matter how much you appreciate and love your body, it's inappropriate to wear something like that in front of families because there are lots of kids and families at the game. So what do you guys think about this? Hmm. Uh, Okay. (laughs) Silent. (laughs) I I think that it is dope that she embraces her body. Yes, we all agree to that. All, All agree. I think there's a time and a place as well yeah. for these kinds of things. I think she wants to wear that. That looks like a great outfit, maybe for the club, maybe for. So there's a dress code for for, I, for places I'm actually, that. Can I be honest? I was actually shocked that this wasn't considered indecent uh, ex- exposure. Closure? Yeah, because the rules was, are different for celebrities. Really? Because I feel I'm like if saying. I walked into a place wearing a tanga, somebody's gonna be like, <laughs> "Where's your pants?" Like, I would think that they'd tell me I couldn't be there. But maybe because she is Lizzo, maybe, she was allowed. Maybe. Yeah, I, w- I was a little confused by that, but it is like a family-friendly event. I know we talked yesterday about Chrissy Teigen and yes. she can expose herself. I-, I think there's also a difference between being inside of your home with your children versus with a bunch of other people's mm-hmm. children. After this clip went viral, Lizzo began receiving tons of messages and comments weight-shaming her. In response, she said this on Instagram, quote, Never ever let somebody stop you or shame you from being yourself. This is who I've always been. Now everyone's looking at it. And your criticism can just remain your criticism. Your criticism has no effect on me. So I want to know, I was having a a conversation with my friend Wendy this morning who said, listen, she's an entertainer. She's always on. That's just that's just her personality. She's she's a performer. Other people say, "Okay, Lizzo, we get it. You're proud of your body, body positivity. But you're at the Lakers game enough with your butt (laughs) hanging out. What is your response to that? Um. Because you, you've heard some of the flack that you've been getting about Not it. really. Okay, well, I let stay, me tell you. I stay in my own positive, mm-hmm. yes. you know. So bubble. you don't even take it all in? Um, well, it's their opinion. So, okay. I mean, it's not for me to really ingest. It's right. for them to express and for me to choose to listen to or not. Or not. Um, you know, Was that me, a spontaneous moment yeah, for Yeah, it, it absolutely was. Um, I think no one would have ever saw... Uh, what I was wearing, like the back of it, if I didn't get up and dance. And the Lakers girls came up to me and said, we're so excited that you're here. We want to perform one of your songs for you. And I remember I was sitting there and I was with my manager and my friend and they were like, you should get up and dance. Like they're doing this for you. And I was like, all right. Uh So I got up and I just did what I always do. Anyone who knows me knows that this is how I've always been. This is how I've always liked to dress. And it took me a long time. But did you forget your butt was out? (laughs) You got well, it says, I had on, I'm just curious. I had on layers uh-huh. down there. So my my <laughs> it wasn't just, you know, flesh to seat. Oh, okay. you know, uh, uh, you know, a lot of contrary to popular belief. Uh-huh. But um, yeah, it was out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'd be out. Okay. You, you've talked about you've talked about success like this. And you're OK with it being out. Yeah. I, 
Okay. Who ever fought with it? You but know she how long did it. it yeah. You know how long it took me to fall in love with this body and yeah. to fall in. Yeah. My butt was my least favorite thing about myself, uh-huh. and I learned to love it. And now it's the thing everybody can't stop talking about. So when people <laughs> say you should be a role model, in fact, you are being a role model <laughs> yeah. even in that in that moment. Yeah. Be you, do you. Uh-huh. Don't ever let anybody take or steal your joy, especially not the internet. Uh huh. So have you have you enjoyed this success? Because I think did I hear the, the periods of times you've been kind of depressed? Yes, but I mean I wouldn't be human if I didn't, you know, have times where the balance, where the highs and the lows kind of happen. Yeah. Um, I accept that. I think fame is a little mm. hard to take for me. It was never my plan. Yeah. Yeah. I love being successful and I love playing music and making but money. Fame is a different <laughs> animal, though. It, it is. is. It is. Yeah. It and is. you can it be successful and not famous. Yeah. Yes. In 2021, Lizzo received backlash for fangirling over Chris Brown backstage at a concert. She was slammed in 2022 for using a slur in one of her songs. In April of this year, her clothing brand Yiddy was accused of ripping off another brand called Your Body after they announced they would be creating gender-affirming shapewear, much like Your Body. In a statement, Your Body accused Lizzo's brand for using the trans community for monetary gain. Quote, You need to recognize trans people beyond the value of our money. If you want to market to us as a community, you must take a stand for our safety, security, and survival. According to Lizzo, her brand has always been about self-acceptance, confidence, and inclusivity, which is why this new lawsuit has people flabbergasted. New tonight, we're hearing from three former backup dancers who are suing Lizzo. Yeah, they accused the Grammy winner of creating a hostile work environment, sexual harassment, and weight shaming. Grace White in the newsroom. She's the only reporter in Texas to speak to those women tonight. Grace? This is the lawsuit. Just a few hours ago, I talked to these three dancers who told me the verbal and emotional abuse they endured pushed them to go to court. The lawsuit names Lizzo, her production company, and the captain of her dance team, Shirley Quigley. The dancers laid out nine different claims, ranging from things like sexual and racial harassment to assault. In that interview tonight, they told me it was a hostile work environment and they had had enough. We reached out to several reps for Lizzo, but have not heard back. We also checked and she has not posted anything yet on social media. The lawsuit was filed in California where these dancers live. We will keep you posted as the case moves through the courts. The lawsuit was filed on August 1st of this year. The plaintiffs in this case are three former dancers of Lizzo's. Ariana Davis, Crystal Williams, and Noel Rodriguez. The defendants are Big Girl Big Touring Inc., which is Lizzo's company, Melissa Jefferson, professionally known as Lizzo, and Shirlene Quigley, Lizzo's dance team captain. The complaint for damages are as follows. 1. Hostile work environment. Sexual harassment. All plaintiffs against all defendants. 2. Failure to prevent and or remedy hostile work environment sexual harassment, all plaintiffs against all defendants. Three, religious harassment, all plaintiffs against defendants Sherlene Quigley and Big Girl Big Touring Inc. Four, failure to prevent and or remedy religious harassment, all plaintiffs against all defendants. Five, racial harassment, plaintiffs Williams and Davis against defendant Big Girl Big Touring Inc. Six, disability discrimination, Plaintiff Davis against defendants Big Girl Big Touring Inc. and Lizzo. 7. Intentional interference with prospective economic advantage. All plaintiffs against Big Girl Big Touring Inc. 8. Assault. Plaintiffs Rodriguez and Davis against defendant Lizzo. 9. False imprisonment. Plaintiff Davis against defendant Big Girl Big Touring Inc. The allegations are as follows. In or about March 2021, Miss Davis and Miss Williams were introduced to Lizzo when they were contestants on Lizzo's reality television show, Watch Out for the Big Girls. During this show, contestants competed for the opportunity to join the Lizzo team as her big girl dancers accompanying Lizzo in her live performances and tours. In or about May 2021, Miss Davis was required by Lizzo and her team to submit a psychological examination to ensure she was psychologically healthy enough to endure the strain of filming the television show. During this examination, 
Ms. Davis disclosed that she struggles with anxiety and depression, which occasionally results in binge eating. The waiver she signed prior to undergoing the examination states that the information disclosed during the evaluation may be provided to production, its representatives, and or any other individuals or entities involved in the show as deemed appropriate. Ms. Davis is informed and believes that her disclosure of her struggles with anxiety, depression, and binge eating were relayed to Lizzo and her company. In or about May 2021, Ms. Rodriguez was hired by Lizzo and her team. While working on the Rumors music video, Ms. Rodriguez was approached with another job opportunity that would have run concurrently to rehearsals for Lizzo's live shows and tour. After rehearsals for Lizzo's live shows were postponed, Ms. Rodriguez approached Lizzo's tour manager about possibly taking on this one-day job opportunity. The tour manager responded, Do you want the job or not? implying that if Miss Rodriguez wanted to keep her position as a tour dancer, she could not take any other positions. In or about August 2021, filming for Lizzo's TV show began. During filming for the show, Miss Davis and Miss Williams were first introduced to defendant Shirlene Quigley, one of the judges and instructors on the show and captain of Lizzo's dance team. Miss Quigley was not only vocal about her religious belief, but took every opportunity to proselytize to any and all in her presence. During filming of the show, Ms. Quigley took particular interest in Ms. Davis and regularly preached at Ms. Davis about what Ms. Quigley believed to be a shared Christian identity. Also, during filming, Ms. Quigley discovered that Ms. Davis was a virgin and Ms. Davis's virginity became a topic of extreme importance to Ms. Quigley. In the months to follow, Miss Quigley would routinely bring up Miss Davis's virginity in conversations with Miss Davis. Miss Quigley even mentioned Miss Davis's virginity in interviews she participated in and later posted to social media, broadcasting an intensely personal detail about Miss Davis to the world. Miss Davis never gave Miss Quigley permission to share this private detail about her life. As one of the competitions in the show, contestants were told they would be required to participate in a nude photo shoot. While some contestants were not bothered by this, the prospect of a nude photo shoot made other contestants severely uncomfortable. Ms. Davis was particularly distressed by this challenge. She was entirely uncomfortable being photographed nude for anyone with access to Amazon Prime Video to see. As this challenge was part of the competition, Ms. Davis believed poor performance or outright refusal would have resulted in her being sent home from the show and no longer being considered for a spot on the dance team. While Ms. Davis did not want to be photographed nude, she also dreaded the thought of not earning a spot performing on tour with Lizzo. This dilemma caused Ms. Davis's anxiety to flare, resulting in extreme distress. Ms. Davis broke down in tears on set while struggling to choose between a once-in-a-lifetime career opportunity and putting her body on display against her will. Ultimately, Ms. Davis was allowed to participate in the photo shoot, partially clothed in a nude bra and underwear. However, this experience foreshadowed the sexually charged and uncomfortable environment Lizzo's employees would be forced to endure. In or about April 2022, plaintiffs began rehearsing in preparation for Lizzo's The Special Tour. During this time, plaintiffs worked closely with Miss Quigley as she was captain of the dance cast. Miss Quigley continued to preach at everyone in her surroundings, especially about her beliefs regarding Christianity and sexuality. Ms. Quigley also had a party trick in which she would simulate oral sex on a banana in front of the rest of the dance cast. These instances were always unprompted and made plaintiffs uncomfortable. Ms. Quigley's sexually inappropriate behavior did not stop at faux fellatio. Despite her staunch beliefs in opposition to premarital sex, she had no problem sharing her masturbatory habits with the dance cast, often stating things to the effect, quote, Masturbating is against my religion, but today I had an oopsie. Miss Quigley's sexually explicit comments were so pervasive, the entire dance team knew about her sexual fantasy of having 10 penises in her face. Outside of the claims against Lizzo specifically, do you think she was aware of the sexual harassment you say you experienced from Quigley? Um, I think in a way, I think uh, Lizzo definitely knew that Shirlene, um was a very 
outwardly religious person, which is not a problem. It's just um, when you try to force that onto other people and then in turn make some kind of like strange sexual, um, it's just a sexually charged it, uh, situation. Um, and I, I'm not sure if she was fully aware of that because I, again, I don't really think she tried her best to keep tabs on everything that we were going through and, you know, dealing with. Um, but I do know that she knew that, um, that Charlene was very, very adamant about sharing her faith in the workplace. So I just want to sort of point out some of the specifics in your lawsuit in regards to what you're talking about. You said uh, um, you're alleging that uh, Quigley uh, was pushing her religious beliefs on the dancers and then was sort of critical. The allegations continue. On another occasion, while on tour with Lizzo, Miss Williams accidentally brushed up against one of the tour bus drivers. The driver responded by saying, quote, you can back up on me again, implying Miss Williams' accidental touch gave him sexual gratification. A different driver was known for playing sexually explicit songs on the tour bus. These interactions made the dance cast incredibly uncomfortable and fear for their safety. As the domestic leg of the special tour came to a close, problems became more abundant, with the last domestic show being played on or about November 19, 2022, and the European leg not scheduled to start until February 2023. Plaintiffs began looking for other work as they were only paid for the time they spent on tour. Lizzo's company preferred plaintiffs did not take on additional gigs and even instructed their agents to place them on a soft hold meaning they would not be paid during the break, but should not be taking on other jobs either. On or about February 23, 2023, plaintiffs performed with Lizzo at a show in Amsterdam. After the show, Lizzo invited the dancers out with her on the town. These invitations were not unusual, and attendance was not mandatory, but it was well known that dance cast members were expected to endear themselves to Lizzo. Lizzo often mentioned that she had, quote, eyes and ears everywhere, and only wanted good people with good energy around her. This particular evening, Lizzo sent out an invitation. Miss Davis and Miss Rodriguez were out at dinner when they received the invitation. Feeling their absences would be noticed and or taken personally by their employer, plaintiffs accepted the invitation before learning what Lizzo had in store for them. As it turns out, Lizzo had planned a night out in Amsterdam's notorious red light district. The main event of the night was a club called Bananan Bar, where patrons are allowed to interact with completely nude performers. While at Bananan Bar, things quickly got out of hand. Lizzo began inviting cast members to take turns touching the nude performers. Lizzo began pressuring Miss Davis to touch the breast of one of the nude women performing at the club. But I think... Uh kind of some of the more disturbing allegations has to do with sort of a night of partying in uh, Amsterdam, where the allegation is that some of the dancers were pressured into, you know, touching a nude performer. Amsterdam has a red light district that, that is legal, um, but the, that, you know, the dancers were made to feel very uncomfortable and participate in ways that they were not, that they did not want to do. Um, so, I, so I'm going to sort of reiterate um, Ed's question, these are, are allegations that, does, the, really the direct question is, does, did Lizzo know about this behavior that you're alleging? Well, Lizzo was um, a participant in the, Lizzo is the reason that we were, that I specifically was pressured to um, touch a new performer. She singled me out at the club that I didn't want to be at, but was told I couldn't really back out since I already said I was going before I knew what it really was. Um, once I had time to research it, me and Noel Rodriguez also, um, we figured out what it was and we we're like, okay, well, maybe we should not go. You know, this is a little weird. Um, but then we were told that a head count was already sent, a list was already sent. So she knows who's coming. And at that time, we had already been kind of fearing for our jobs and being ostracized. So it is a understand it's an understanding in the camp that if you don't really participate and you know try to get in with Lizzo, it's it you you won't be booked on as many jobs. She won't like you as much. It it just you'll be ostracized later. So 
we went, we stayed in the corner. We talked to each other the whole time. We tried to ignore, you know, what was happening. Um, a lot of crazy things were happening. Um, and after a lot of explicit things went on, um, Lizzo kind of saw me, singled me out. She was kind of going around like, um, inviting people to touch the nude performers. And, um, I guess it was my turn and she, um, you know, started a chant. She was like, Oh, Ari, it's your turn, turn to do it. And I was like, no, I'm okay. She was like, no, come on, do it. And I was, I said no again. And then she, um, she said, Ari, Ari. And then everyone kind of in the club joins in and they're like, Ari, Ari. So of course, like I had to do it cause I couldn't like get out of that situation. So I briefly, you know, touched and everyone started laughing. It, it was, it was funny to them because me of all people, they don't see, they see me as like a very, you know, modest or, you know, that kind of person. So me of all people touching a nude person is like hilarious. And how were you uh, feeling at the time? I was mortified. Um, I even remember like trying to cope with how awkward I felt by like making a joke about like the lotion that the, the, nude performer was wearing like I like like I don't even know I was just I didn't know what to do so I just kind of like laughed it off and unfortunately I left soon after that um, with Noel. The allegations continue. In their lawsuit plaintiffs allege that Lizzo's company treated the black members of the dance team differently than other members. They allege that Lizzo's management team consisted of almost entirely white Europeans who often accused the black members of the dance team of being lazy, unprofessional, and having bad attitudes. On or about April 20th, 2023, the dance cast was scheduled for an eight-hour rehearsal. Near the end of rehearsal, Lizzo arrived and called the dance cast together for a meeting to address the rumors of unprofessionalism. During this meeting, Lizzo also stated that the dancers were not performing up to par and repeatedly accused the dancers of drinking alcohol before shows, even though the dance cast had never partaken in such a practice. Lizzo then stated all the dancers would be required to re-audition for their spots, and if Lizzo was dissatisfied with their performance at the end of the day, the dancers would be fired and sent home. The standard for dancers... Um, in this camp was very much more stringent and more strict. Um, things that, you know, the other cast members could do um, and, you know, get away with essentially um, the dancers were not allowed to engage in any of that activity um, in terms of in terms of like the the um, false allegations that they had brought forth to us when we were on tour about us drinking before shows and things like that. Um, That was never the case. In fact, alcohol was never even allowed in our dressing room or on our rider, which is the food and drinks provided to us. Um, So it it was like literally impossible for us to even do that. But yet we were the ones who were blamed for drinking on the job. Um, And, um, it was stated to us by, you know, Lizzo that she was like, it doesn't matter if I'm doing it. It doesn't matter if the band or anyone or anyone else is doing it. It's like, you guys can't do it. Um, so and, you're yeah. what, what I hear, so, cause, because you guys were let go, you're saying that, you know, the reasons why you were let go, you believe were false. Why do you think you were let go? Uh, for me personally, um, we did have a meeting, uh, the one that Ari was speaking of with her uh, mentioning the allegations of us drinking before shows. And um, in that particular meeting, I did uh, ask to speak in which I uh, informed her and let her know that us drinking before was before shows was never the case um, and that we would never want to put her, the show or ourselves or our jobs in jeopardy, um, to which she kind of just blew it off and um said, okay, well, if you're not drinking before us, well, then good for you. Mm -hmm. Um, You guys still aren't performing the way that y'all need to. And people are probably saying that because of how you're you're performing. So, um, and then days later, I was um, let go in a hotel lobby. So the allegations continue. On or about April 21st, 2023, 
Ms. Davis was called into a private meeting with Lizzo and her choreographer. They questioned whether Ms. Davis was struggling with something as she seemed less committed to her role on the dance cast. They asked Ms. Davis for an explanation why she seemed less bubbly and vivacious than she did prior to the tour starting. Ms. Davis stated that she was dealing with personal issues, but did not, nor would she ever let it affect her work. Ms. Davis shared that she had been struggling with anxiety and depression and has been diagnosed with binge eating disorder. Lizzo is obviously known for being a body image positive person, somebody who sort of just says you got to own who you are and, mm-hmm. and be proud of it. But you've brought up mm-hmm. an incident, uh, you're alleging something that happened at the South by Southwest Music Festival that you claim contradicts this image that's been created around her. Tell us about it. So actually, um, South by Southwest was mentioned at one of the end of tour parties, um, the end of the first leg of tour, everyone was going around making their testimonials. And, you know, it was my turn. I want to speak up and say, hey, like, just thank you so much for like this, this great journey, because at the time it was a wonderful journey um, for the most part, you know, besides a couple snafus with management. Um, and their like microaggressions. But other than that, like the journey, I had met amazing people and it was great. So I was saying my piece of saying thank you. And I was saying that before I did this, I didn't really believe in myself and that um, it was hard when I first started, but I actually did it. And I was proud of myself. And she was like, oh, yeah, I was worried about you at South by Southwest. And um, I was thinking to myself, like, why would she say that she was worried about me at South by Southwest? We were pre- we were doing promo for the show um, in South by Southwest, and that was the first time I had physically shown up having gained weight um, um, in front of everybody and to a Lizzo event, a Lizzo gig or whatever. Um, so that was the only noticeable difference about me. Everything else about me was absolutely the same. My dancing ability was the same. My energy was the same. Um, all of the girls can attest to that. Um, but the only thing about me that was different was my weight. And... I believe she was she was trying to allude to the fact that I was gaining weight in like a way that she wouldn't like get canceled. That makes mm. sense. So it was never like a you're fat, you're getting fired. It was never you're gaining too much weight. You're da, 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 da. it was never blatant. It was very nuanced. Mm-hmm. And she stated in one of the meetings that we had, she was like you know, dancers get fired. We were, she was basically saying how grateful we should be that she knows our names and that she gives us the time of day. And then she was also saying that, you know, you should be grateful because dancers get fired for gaining weight. Um, and then she kind of looked at me and I don't know if she remembers if she looked at me, but it, it always felt like that. And then right. there was another instance when I was cornered into um, a room with just her and uh, the choreographer um, who I looked up to very, very much. Um, so it was very intimidating. And they pulled me into a private meeting and they wanted to know what was wrong with me um, because they said I don't seem the same. All of all of these don't seem the same. And what's wrong with you? You know, something must be going on. We can see right through you. All of these kind of things have have been said to me um, in, in, in a way to like mask as a safe space. But really, there was this underlying air of like, why are you bigger? Right. It, it, that's, that's what it felt like. So um, let me let me ask yeah. Crystal, um, you know, a, a lot of people are going to hear these accusations and be shocked precisely because of what Ed said. Lizzo is known for body positivity. Crystal, I want to ask you, you know, why did you want to work with Lizzo? And you know that some of her fans are going to say, well, we, you know, you didn't say anything about this experience until after you were fired. So how do you respond to them? The allegations continue. On or about April 26, 2023, Miss Williams was terminated in the lobby of the hotel under the guise of budget cuts. On or about April 27, 2023, all the dancers were called into a meeting with Lizzo to discuss notes on how they had been dancing. Ms. Davis, who suffers from an eye condition, sometimes becomes disoriented in stressful situations. Accordingly, Ms. Davis has a habit of making audio recordings of stressful interactions so she can review them later in less stressful environments. On or about May 3, 2023, all the dancers were called into an emergency wardrobe fitting. As they arrived at the fitting, 
Lizzo's management team, and security were there waiting for the dance cast. Security took each dancer's phone as they entered the room. Miss Davis admitted that she had recorded the meeting and explained it was because she wanted to have a copy of the notes. After berating Miss Davis, Lizzo fired her. Before Lizzo left, Miss Rodriguez asked if she could have a word with Lizzo. Miss Rodriguez explained that she did not appreciate how Lizzo had handled the situation with Miss Davis and therefore would resign. According to Miss Rodriguez, Lizzo became aggressive and tried assaulting her. Miss Rodriguez and Miss Davis would return to their hotel rooms, pack their bags, and leave. They write that their flights did not leave for another seven hours, but they were too afraid that Lizzo, Miss Quigley, or someone at Lizzo's direction might return with the intent to further confront or even hurt them. At what point did you realize that what you were experiencing, what you led you experienced, was not normal? Um, I, it's hard to answer that question because as this was my first professional job, I was told by the dance captain and, you know, um, just it's this thing in the dance industry that you have to, you know, shut up and, you know, take whatever you get and just be grateful for whatever crumbs you get um, as a dancer. Um, so a lot of things that were going on, it took me a really long time to figure out that it was wrong. It took me actually until leaving the, the camp that I figured out that everything that w went on was bad because I just chalked it up to, you know, oh, Lizzo might be a diva or, you know, this is just the industry. This is what we we go through. I mean, I, I, I think that I had inklings like I would be on the phone with my mom all day and, and be like just complaining about the, the disrespect and the, the treatment and the, the humiliation. The facts are the facts, like Crystal said. Was I pressured to touch a new performer? Yes. Was I brought into a private meeting where I was kind of interrogated about my personal matters and ended up having to share very personal, personal things about myself regarding my weight? Yes. What, I mean, it, the list goes on. Were we pressured to do an excruciatingly long rehearsal that turned into a re-audition for the job that we already booked because apparently we weren't doing good enough? Yes, that is true. During that, during that um, excruciatingly long re-audition process, was I under the impression that if I left the stage, I would be fired? Yes. Did I unfortunately go to the bathroom on myself on one stage because I was so terrified? Yes. There is, you in a court of law, I don't know, I'm not a lawyer, I don't know anything, but I know that if you ask someone to tell the truth, these things will come out of her mouth. If right. you have to say yes or no to these questions, she has to say yes because they are true. There was multiple witnesses and I, I don't appreciate um, the discredit of, of our feelings and our experiences and our traumas. Understood. Uh, Joelle, you allege that uh, Lizzo intended to hit you at one point uh, after you, sorry, Noel, uh, the intended to hit you at one point after you resigned. Do you really think that she was going to resort or could yeah. resort to physical violence? Yeah, I do. I do. And I mean, the facts of that were that she actually balled up her fist like this to me. She started cracking her knuckles and she was like, you're so effing lucky that basically I'm not going to hit you. And, you know, I was in shock watching her do that and cracking her knuckles and acting as if she was going to come at me. And for a second, I was like, you know, I don't think she's going to do that. Like, that's not what's going to happen. But the fact that one of her dancers, that was, all of us were present, all the dancers were present for every, mostly all of these allegations. And in that meeting that we had where she got physical and was about to assault me, her best friend, who's also one of the dancers, had to jump out of the couch and physically hold her back from coming and hitting me. So yes, I, I do believe that if she wasn't held back by that dancer, um, she would have hit me. Upon these allegations, others would come forward, sharing similar stories about Lizzo's behavior. Filmmaker and Oscar nominee, Sophia Allison, spoke out and shared her experience with the singer. 
The filmmaker posted about her alleged experience with the musician on Instagram Tuesday, sharing this snap, seemingly filming Lizzo on stage, explaining that in 2019, she traveled with Lizzo as the director of her documentary, but walked away after two weeks, claiming she was treated with such disrespect. I witnessed how arrogant, self-centered, and unkind she is. Sophia calls the situation and adds that she felt gaslit and was deeply hurt, but has since healed. Reading these reports made me realize how dangerous of a situation it was. This kind of abuse of power happens far too often. It hurts my feelings. This is my show. This is my music. This is my life. Please don't hurt my feelings. Please don't break my heart. Let's all be the best we can be. This is fine, but this was a rehearsal. But when it's time to go tonight, it's time to mother Go. It's not clear whether Sophia was the original director on this project or if she was filming a different project. But Sophia says she's telling her story now because validating other Black women's experiences is deeply important to her. Sophia spoke out just hours after three of Lizzo's dancers filed a lawsuit against her, her production company, Big Girl Big Touring Inc., and Shirlene Quigley, the captain of Lizzo's dance team. Another one of Lizzo's former dancers, Courtney Hollenquist, would speak out and share her experience with the singer. She took to social media and posted the following message, quote, For clarification, I'm not a part of the lawsuit, but this was very much my experience and my time there. Big shout out to the dancers who had the courage to bring this to light. In support, Lizzo's former creative director shared a screenshot of Courtney's statement and added, quote, Echoing what Courtney said, I haven't been a part of that world for around three years, for a reason. I very much applaud the dancers' courage to bring this to light, and I grieve parts of my own experience. I'd appreciate space to understand my feelings. Reports would also come out that singer Beyonce snubbed Lizzo after she left out Lizzo's name in the Break My Soul remix during her current world tour. Originally, the song lyrics read this. Bessie Smith, Nina Simone, Betty Davis, Solange Knowles, Badu, Lizzo, Kelly Roll. But last night, they switched it up. Of course, this comes after the shocking news that three of Lizzo's former backup dancers are suing the singer, alleging sexual harassment and accusing her of creating a hostile work environment. In the wake of the lawsuit, a video resurfaced of Lizzo talking about her desire to see a sex show in Amsterdam. Take a look. Or kind of, you know, it's Amsterdam, so we party. Well, I saw what you did uh, yesterday because I follow you on Instagram. Um, and I saw on the Insta stories you were on the red light district. Yeah, we were. You were to the Casa Rosso. Oh my God, how do you know that? Yeah, because I, I lived for four years on the red light district, in the middle of the red light district. So I, I recognize a lot of places. Um, and I saw that you saw a live sex show. <laughs> Please tell me everything about the sex show. It was people fucking, man. It was crazy. <laughs> They were just doing it, but you know what? It was beautiful. Yeah. I, I went to the one show where it was like a couple and they were like passionately making love. It was really passionate? It, it was really, pa they kissed. She, they kissed after, I'm not going to say what she did. <laughs> but I'm trying to go to the show where you eat the banana out the <laughs> Which one is that? This is the banana bar. That's the banana bar? Yeah, you and wear the banana And they have the banana, banana in the, in yeah, the yeah, coochie? Yeah, and, and ping pong balls. And you have to go... After days of silence, Lizzo would finally release a statement on Instagram addressing the allegations. On Thursday, the two beloved singer shared a lengthy statement on Twitter, writing, These last few days have been gut-wrenchingly difficult and overwhelmingly disappointing. My work ethic, morals, and respectfulness have been questioned. My character has been criticized. Usually, I choose not to respond to false allegations, but these are as unbelievable as they sound and too outrageous to not be addressed. These sensationalized stories are coming from former employees who have publicly admitted that they were told their behavior on tour was inappropriate and unprofessional. As an artist, I have always been very passionate about what I do. I take my music and my performances seriously because at the end of the day, I only want to put out the best art that represents me and my fans. With passion comes hard work and high standards. 
Sometimes I have to make hard decisions, but it's never my intention to make anyone feel uncomfortable or like they aren't valued as an important part of the team. The Grammy winner also denied weight shaming anyone, adding, I am not here to be looked at as a victim, but I also know that I am not the villain that people and the media have portrayed me to be these last few days. I am very open with my sexuality and expressing myself, but I cannot accept or allow people to use that openness to make me out to be something I am not. There is nothing I take more seriously than the respect we deserve as women in the world. I know what it feels like to be body shamed on a daily basis and would absolutely never criticize or terminate an employee because of their weight. The 35-year-old concluded, I'm hurt, but I will not let the good work I've done in the world be overshadowed by this. I want to thank everyone who has reached out in support to lift me up during this difficult time. Lizzo would lawyer up with the powerful defense attorney, Marty Singer. Now on the case, he would immediately go after plaintiff Ariana Davis as he published a video of her speaking highly of Lizzo. Surprise! <laughs> Hi! What's up? It's Ariana Davis from season one of Lizzo's Watch Out for the Big Girls. I know, you're probably thinking, why is she here? What is she doing auditioning for season two? The short answer is, I'm a singer. <laughs> and I just wanna share that part of me with y'all. I know, I've been on tour, I've been working with Lizzo for, for uh, some months, maybe close to a year now, and um, it's been so amazing and such a beautiful journey. And she's probably gonna be like, girl, what are you doing? But anyway, I figured that I might as well shoot my shot. I mean, I don't think she knows that I can sing. And the biggest thing about me is that I always say this, but dance is my first love and music is my passion. And if I was to be chosen for the cast of season two of Watch Out for the Big Girls, I, <laughs> I don't know. I just think that it would mean the world to me to share my voice. I think my voice has gone quiet for too long. And I think that I have a story that people need to hear because I think they can relate to it. And I think it can help change lives and, you know, do what Lizzo's doing. I've, I look up to her so much and I just want to follow in her footsteps and not only be an amazing dancer, but be an amazing singer and storyteller. I love to write music, I love to sing, and I just wanna share that with the Queen Lizzo herself. Yeah, um, choose me to be part of the singing group. I know I'm already a dancer, but I can sing too, so. Upon Ariana's video making headlines, here's what Lizzo's lawyer had to say. The lawsuit filed by the three dancers against Lizzo and the other defendants is specious and without merit. Evidence of this being a sham lawsuit is confirmed by one of the plaintiffs, Ariana Davis, in her own words in her video interview for season two of Watch Out for the Big Girls in April 2023, which she made after the European tour, after virtually all of her alleged claims referred to in her lawsuit had already occurred. Notwithstanding her claims in the lawsuit that it was so horrible to work with Lizzo as a dancer after being on tour with Lizzo, she actually auditioned to continue working working with Lizzo as a singer on an upcoming tour as part of a girl group. Ariana then released a response reacting to the video, saying, of course I wasn't going to say anything negative about the camp while I was still in it. Right up until the last minute, I didn't realize how bad it was and how much I was being taken advantage of. I just genuinely wanted to save my job. The video further explains how much I was trying to please Lizzo. But it was such a toxic work environment because throughout all the abuse, I was still trying to please her and make her think that I was good enough. This video was done before the bulk of our allegations occurred. And this was just me grasping at straws and my last attempt to make her see how committed I was to being loyal to her and her camp. In an interview with Access Hollywood's Zuri Hall on Wednesday, Ariana opened up more about what she thinks when she looks back. It was never enough until you're out of it to realize that this was wrong. And, oh man, I spent so much time being loyal to her. I spent so much time um, advocating for her. Even when people would ask me, how's, how's it working with Lizzo? I'm like, you know, she's great. She's, she's a great, but she's definitely goal-oriented. She's a, I mean, mm -hmm. 
there's interviews on interviews of me talking about Lizzo and how amazing she is. Um, but, but you're never going to say anything bad about your boss when you're still right. working for her. Attorneys for the plaintiffs responded to Lizzo's statement with the following, quote, the dismissive comments and utter lack of empathy are quite telling about her character and only serve to minimize the trauma she has caused the plaintiffs and other employees who have now come forward sharing their own negative experiences. While Lizzo notes it was never her intention to make anyone feel uncomfortable, that is exactly what she did to the point of demoralizing her dancers and violating the law. Given Lizzo is denying that any of this happened, let's take it to trial. More witnesses are coming forward every day, corroborating the plaintiff's allegations. So we're looking forward to facing Lizzo and her team in court. To be honest, this was a corporate office and she was doing exactly the same thing that she was doing on tour, immediately that would be so many HR violations. Nobody speaks up because they're so scared for their jobs. I was terrified for my job. And for this to be my first experience is really 